let's take a peek inside my math fact intervention. So if you're familiar with any of my other math interventions, my left-hand side of the page is the same. Every single day, the kids will start the group in the exact same way, but then on the right-hand side of the page, there will be different skills, different activities, and in this particular book, it's a two-day rotation. So all of the odd days will have a layout that looks like this. And on all of the even days, we'll have a layout and skills that look like this. I'll dive more into those here in just a second. So on the left-hand side of the page, I always start the group by giving my kids a time limit. So one of my groups that works on this book, we start our group. I usually pick up my students about 1.15 by the time we get in. Everybody gets their books. They have their multiplication charts, that kind of thing. It's maybe 1.18-ish. And so we race to see if we can get these done by 1.15. And at this point of the year, my kids are still using their multiplication charts. So they might go through and answer ones that are easy, ones that they have memorized, ones that they know, but it's also a really good time to practice using our multiplication chart to solve some of these problems. And we do that every single day. We call it our math fact frenzy and we just try to do them as fast as we can. Now on this side of the page, we'll have a word problem. With these early on, there are a lot of addition and subtraction, but as the kids have had a chance to practice multiplication and then even um, in our draw it section, some division, um, we'll throw those in as word problems as well. We also work on fractions because I think kids can do this. It's just sometimes intimidating. Like they look at this and they have no idea what to do. So they might write like two over six instead of two over eight. Um, we talk about what is a numerator? What is a denominator? What do those numbers tell us? And then we decide, are those two fractions equal? And we circle yes or no. A lot of my kids who are working at this level still have IEP goals for addition or subtraction with regrouping. And so I like to keep that as something that we're practicing on a regular basis. And so every day there will either be two addition and one subtraction, or then on the opposite day, we'll have two subtraction and one addition. I also like most of my kids at this level are able to do these problems, but switching back and forth is a whole new skill that they need to learn to practice. We also spend some time drawing that. Um, maybe we draw circles, maybe we draw arrays. It doesn't matter to me what they do as long as they're starting to see, oh, I may not have a multiplication chart in front of me. I may not have that one memorized, but I can figure out what it is. We also solve some simple algebraic expressions because I really find that this is something our kids can do when they've had practice. But if they just look at this, they're going to be like, uh, what, what do I do with this? I've never seen an X in a problem or I've never seen a variable. And so I like for them to be able to practice that. And then on day two, just like before, they'll start with their math fact frenzy and then they'll come over and have a new set of skills. So we work on telling time. We work on finding the perimeter. If you wanted to change this to area, you could or to have them find both. But at this point, if my kids are working on math facts, they're probably not ready for 91 times 50, um, but they can do perimeter. And so use your best judgment as to what that would be. But at this point, I'm just asking my kids to find the perimeter. Again, we have addition and subtraction. This time we have two subtraction, one addition. So it's the opposite of the previous day. And then to go the opposite of the previous day, we'll be doing division. Uh, we also practice rounding to the nearest 10, the nearest 100, and the nearest 1,000. Because again, this is a skill that the kids can do, but they do need practice. And so again, as I flip through the book, day three looks a lot like day one. Day four looks a lot like day two. And again on day five, that looks like days one and three. And so it's very routine. It gives the kids a good opportunity to practice. At the beginning of the year, it's a lot of guided practice. I'm doing a lot of the work while they're doing a lot of copying, but in time, they can do that without me. Um, some of my kids, depending on how um, good of a reader they are, they'd be ready for that word problem. They're solving a lot of things like this all on their own, but it takes time and it takes practice. And luckily with this intervention, you'll have 40 weeks of practice